Exactly. Discounts are based on speed, and speed is all about incentive. So if every customer was given 30 days trade credit and every customer waited 30 days to pay our business, we would be waiting and waiting because most customers eventually would realize they might as well pay us on the 30th day and they would all start doing that because we're giving them a 30-day interest-free loan. So we get tired of waiting. So here's what we decide to do. Let's offer a percentage if they would pay us within 10 days, we'll give them 2% off, but we want to get paid within 10 days. That's called a sales discount. It's giving the customer an incentive to pay us more quickly. Now, for accounting purposes, how do we record that sale? Do we record 100% at the time of sale? Or do we record only 98% at the time of sale? Because let's face it, at the time of sale, we really don't know whether we're going to get 100% or we're only going to get 98% if they pay within the 10 days, and we just don't know. But we still have to record the sale at the time of sale, so we can choose. And on the CPA exam, you're going to choose between the gross method and the net method. On slide 5, the gross method, you're going to record 100% of the sale. You're going to record the sale as if there is no discount. Because the discount, while it's expressed as a percentage of the selling price, if we're giving them 2% off if they pay within 10 days, that's expressed as 210 net 30. Ever see that in any of the questions when you study? 210 net 30 means that if the customer pays us within 10 days, they're going to take 2% off. But if they don't pay us within 10 days, then they owe us the full amount within 30 days. Well, the gross method of recording this ignores the discount. So when we first book the sale and the receivable, we're just going to book 100% as if there is no discount. And the theory here is that we don't think the customer is going to take advantage of the discount. So if we use the gross method and they do take advantage of the discount, then we're going to have to make another entry to record the discount because we're going to assume that they're not going to take advantage of the discount when we use the gross method, look at six. There's sales of $10,000 made on credit June 1st. Terms of 210 net 30. Well, under the gross method, we're going to ignore the 210 net 30 and just record it gross. Accounts receivable 10,000 debit, credit sales $10,000. That's the gross method. Pretend there's not even any discount and just record the sale gross. Now, there's a lot of ifs to follow, because if cash is collected from the customer on day 20, well, that's pretty much what we expected. They didn't pay us within the 10 days. We recorded it gross, 10000 and that's what we're going to get. We're going to get 10000 because they paid us on day 20. So then debit cash, credit accounts receivable, and we were on, we were on to it all along. They were not going to take advantage of the discount but what if they do take advantage of the discount surprise surprise we thought they were gonna pay us after the 10 days turns out go to seven if cash is collected on day eight that's within the 10 days they take two percent off right we only get 9800 in cash Credit accounts receivable for 10000 and the difference is a debit to sales discounts taken. That's a debit. And what kind of account is that? Contra revenue. The opposite of revenue. The opposite of sales. Sales is normal credit. Here it's a debit. Yeah, you don't debit sales here, although it is a contra revenue account. The proper debit would be sales discounts taken. And that's so you can keep track at the end of the year how many times somebody took advantage of your discount that you didn't think would. Because if you just debited sales here, you wouldn't really know. In the end, of course, you're going to net all this out to sales. At the end of the year, you'll have your gross sales minus your sales discounts. You'll only report the net sales. But... 
it's good to know internally that you have a sales discounts account, sales discounts taken, to show you how many times you thought that somebody wouldn't take advantage and they wound up taking advantage of the discount. You'll always know the amount of the discount because the question will say like this. Assume seller sells goods to buyer on January 2nd, $100,000, 210 net 30. They have to tell you which method they're using. Under the gross method, the entry on January 2nd would include, well, you're going to debit accounts receivable and credit sales, but for how much? The full thing if you're using the gross method, the full 100000 no discount will be applied on the date of sale because if you're using the gross method, you're suggesting that they're not going to take advantage of the discount. And now on slide 10, like I said, there's a lot of what ifs now. What if they pay on January 9th? That's within the 10-day discount period. Now you're going to... Right, now you got to debit sales discounts for 2000 and that means you're only going to get 98000 in cash, but you still reduced your receivable by the full amount of 100000 because you're not owed anything anymore. You're not owed anything anymore. It only cost them 98000 to settle what was a $100,000 receivable on your books, so that's why you'll record sales discounts taken. But that's only if they pay within the discount period and you already recorded it gross. Now, what if they pay after the discount period? What's the entry now? That's right. We just debit cash, credit accounts receivable, 100000 Notice the net method's coming next. Yeah, where we would record it for 98000 initially, but we haven't done that yet. So far, we've recorded it gross, and then if we get surprised and they take advantage of the discount, then we have to record a sales discounts taken. That's what we saw back on slide 10, where they paid us on January 9th. Then it's letter D, where you debit the sales discounts taken for 2000 You still reduce the receivable for the 100000 and the cash is only 98000 But if they pay you after the 10 days, that's what you expected all along because you used the gross method. Then you just have a cash 100000 because it's going to cost them 100000 to satisfy this receivable that you recorded at 100000 And now for the net method on slide 14. So the net method record sales and accounts receivable net of the discount. So now we're going to assume when we first make the journal entry that the customer is going to take advantage of the discount. So if they do take advantage of the discount, no adjustments needed. All they got to do is debit cash and credit the receivable. It's just that what if they pay after the discount period? Now we get surprised. And we have to make an entry. We have to include an account called sales discount not taken, which is additional revenue for us. Because we originally only recorded it net, which means we recorded it as if they were going to take the discount. Then if they do not take it, we get more revenue and more cash. Go to 15. So assume seller sells goods to buyer on January 2nd, 100000 210 net 30. Under the net method, the entry on January 2nd would look like this. Hey, it's Darius. You want to get a 75 and pass the FAR exam? Go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get the FAR video bundle. Get all the videos you need to pass FAR. But don't just take my word for it. Get in touch with some of these students, these candidates who have successfully passed these exams. Ask them how they were able to pass these exams. Ask them what they were watching and how they learned all this, and how they remembered it. No memorization here. you got to be able to analyze this stuff. 
You can't memorize your way to a CPA. You might even know some of these people. <laughs> 